Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and we are back out in the garage for part three of the 2006 Mustang GT engine disassembly. I'm trying a new tactic today, and that is coming out in the garage nice and early in the morning before it turns into a literal sauna in here. So let's see if we can get more done today. A quick reminder before we start, down in the description below, I have the time codes for the different parts that I'm taking off of the motor, so you can jump right to an individual part if that's what you're looking for and also any parts or tools that I use in this video. I've added links down in the description below so you can head to Amazon and pick those up. So in the last video, we took off the intake manifold, the fuel rail, and uh, all of our coils and things like that at the top of the motor. What I wanna do is continue and just kind of finish up the top of the motor. And what that means to me is taking off those valve covers. Once we have those valve covers off, we're pretty much done on the top side of the motor. And then we just need to work on the front getting to that timing chain cover, and then obviously pulling off the timing so the heads can come off. Let's jump right into it. Now I wanna start on the driver's side because I perceive that as kind of being the more difficult of the two. We have the oil dipstick in the way, we have some EVAP stuff here, and then we have some loom connectors that are kind of being held in. Um, one's on the valve cover, one's kind of obstructing it. So uh, let's start with that. These are all eight millimeter bolts. On this side, there's 15 of them and on the other side, there's 14. When you take them out, there's not really a particular order, but when you put them in, they need to go back in in this particular order, and they all need to be 89 inch pounds. Again, inch pounds, not foot pounds. If you put them in at 89 foot pounds, you're gonna be breaking something. So let's start by continuing to get the electrical out of the way. In the last video, of course, I took out all of my coil packs and the fuel rail, so those are completely out of the way. We just need to get our control solenoid electrical connector out of the way, and then the rest of this electrical, and of course our dipstick. So let's take the dipstick out. That's also an eight millimeter bolt. You just, uh, you'll see it down here. It connects to, I think the head, and then we just wanna unscrew that, and then it'll actually just pull straight out. So I'm gonna pull it out because later on, when I pull off the heads, I'm gonna be pulling off the exhaust manifolds as well. So uh, let's just do that, get it out of the way, and move on. Excellent, now that it's loose, just kind of uh, grab it by that mount there and just pull up and it should pop right out. Now it looks like this little canister is actually in the way. So I pulled out the dipstick and I can kind of finagle it but I really have to push hard on it and I feel like it's gonna be scratching stuff up down there and I don't wanna damage the hose. So I'm just gonna loosen these here. These are just 10 millimeter bolts and kind of get this canister out of the way while I pull this dipstick out. All right, so I have it just moved out of the way temporarily, and now you can easily pull the dipstick tube out. Notice that it just has a single oil seal, so it just has a little O-ring here, and it has no other connectors down below, so you're not having to worry about unscrewing anything from the block. So set that aside, and now we can start taking the rest off. Next, we have our VCT solenoid electrical connector. That's just a simple uh, push down and pull kind of deal. And then we have a few more connectors that kind of hold this loom onto the either the head or the valve cover. So I'm just gonna take a little uh, flathead screwdriver and just kind of get underneath there and gently pull up on those. Excellent. Good, and there's one, and then there's another one right down here. So that's all free. Kind of gently pull this back, take these off, kind of see what we're dealing with here. All right, so if we take a look around the entire valve cover and we see that nothing else is connected to it, it's time to pull it off. I decided that before I take off the valve cover, I'm just gonna quickly remove this top radiator hose. So um, I'm just gonna label these. They're very different shapes, but I labeled this one passenger side, this one driver's side, uh, just to make it easy on myself. So I'm gonna pull this hose off just to give some more room when I'm working around here. Plus, this is gonna have to come off later anyways when I go to take off the cylinder head. So just get a pan underneath the car in case you do have some residual antifreeze in here. Uh, and then just grab these clamps, slide them down, and pull the hose off. Now if these hoses have never been removed, um, mine clearly haven't, they will be stuck on very, uh, very tightly. So I just very carefully took a flathead screwdriver and without marring the, the tube down below, I just sort of gently worked it underneath and just pushed it back a little bit to loosen it up. So now that it's loose, we just pull it out. There we go. And then do the same down below, of course. 
The bottom connection to that hose was giving me a ton of trouble. So instead of spending a bunch of time on it, I just kind of disconnected it from a support down below here and just pushed it back out of the way. I also have some really small bungee cords and I just kind of pulled the electrical connectors up and away from my working area. So now I feel like I have a nice space here to just pull off my bolts and pull off the valve cover. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna grab my eight millimeter deep well socket and I'm just gonna pull off all of the bolts. And again, there's no particular order in taking them off just when putting them back on. So just take those off and we'll move to the next step. All right, so I went ahead and loosened the bolts and these are actually not designed to come out. So just make sure that they're all kind of freely uh, flopping around, if you will. And then we're just gonna work on gently pulling the valve cover off of the head. Now, a few things to be careful of. First of all, this is not a terribly thick part, so don't go prying from one end and kind of pull up like this. You wanna to try to pull it away from the motor, especially because your uh, cam phaser gear is right here, and that's gonna stick up a little bit higher. So just be careful as you're pulling this off. You also have some gasket maker where the head, the front cover, and the valve cover all meet. So uh, you're gonna have some actual RTV there to kind of contend with. Uh, but the rest is just gonna be a regular rubber gasket. So I have a plastic pry tool and that's about as uh, aggressive as I'm willing to be here. I don't want to uh, do any damage to the mating surface of either the valve cover or of course the head. So I'm just gonna pick a spot here, get under it, all right, it already broke loose. So I don't know if you heard that, but it's already moving here. There you go, another pop. And then I'm gonna keep going, kinda grab something down here. There we go. Get this down here in front. Kind of wedge it in there. There we go, excellent. So, we broke it loose. Make sure all of your bolts are coming out. It appears that not all of them are. So let's gently set that back in. Figure out where we're catching here. It's back here, there we go. Excellent. So now we pull that away. And just uh, don't turn it over over top of your cams, of course, because there might be some dirt or something that falls out of it. But other than that, just go find a safe place to set this down. Now, lastly, we have our gasket, and that will just simply peel away. And we'll want to get a new one when we go to reinstall. However, what you'll see down here by the spark plug wells is a collection of dirt against that gasket. So you'll wanna find a way to get that cleaned out. I'm probably just gonna grab a vacuum and then kinda of gently vacuum that out because you don't want that dirt and grime falling into, of course, your cams and valves. All right, I just took a vacuum, kinda of vacuumed out where some of the dirt was collected. And so now we can just very carefully pull our gasket away. Now, this here, where we have that gasket maker, it's just kind of sticking a little bit. I'm just getting my plastic scraper. There we go, I'm just pulling that out. So just keep pulling all that away. Now obviously before you're ready to reinstall your valve cover, if you're just taking off the cover to work on maybe your cams, maybe swap out a cam, uh, then make sure this is all clean and uh, kind of prepped before you go and put the valve cover back on. For me, I'm just taking off these heads, so I'm not gonna worry about it and um, I'll deal with cleaning it later. Sweet, let's go do it on the other side. On the left side, I am also gonna work on taking this hose off. This is the upper radiator hose. And uh, to do that, it's a little obstructed here with our radiator cover. So I'm gonna remove that. To do that, I just have a small flat head. I'm just gonna pop up these little body panel clips. Looks like there are six of them. Once you have all of those off, it, it does go into a seam up on the front grill. So just lift up and then pull back. Set it aside. Great, so now I have access to both of my hose clamps. So I'm gonna pull these clamps off and then just pull off the hose. Now that that's clear, we are now free to take off the passenger side valve cover. So again, we just take off our VCT solenoid connector. And then just uh, take a look down below and just make sure everything is clear. Now this one's gonna be a little bit more of an obstruction, mostly because we have a very uh, a main connector basically coming in to uh, what looks like a control module. So again, we wanna make sure everything's clean, everything's clear, and then just go back through and take off all of the bolts 
and then pull off this cover. So like last time, I went ahead and cleaned this uh, intake manifolds mating surface, and now I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna loosen all of the bolts, and then I'm gonna kind of try to find a way this oil filler neck uh, kind of makes it a little bit difficult to get this out, but we'll kind of see how that goes as we, uh, as we progress here. So now I have everything loose on the passenger side, and I'm gonna grab my plastic pry tool again and just kind of break the seal, so to speak. So I'm just gonna choose a place near the back. There we go. Nice and easy. Awesome. Then come down to the bottom, do the same. Great. Awesome, so we are, looks like we're fully loose here. Now we just kind of have to get creative here on how we're going to handle pulling this off. We have our VCT solenoid here we need to pull it off of, but we also have this huge electrical wire that we need to deal with. So hopefully you can see this. There's a little uh, wire here, just looks like a ground, and it is uh, making everything a little bit too tight. So I'm gonna actually remove this so it frees up some uh, wiggle room here. All right, so that's now clear. That was just a 15 millimeter bolt. And now I flip this harness over top of the oil filler neck. And now I feel like we should not have an issue pulling this off. So let's just kind of, again, make sure we have all the space we need. All right, let's see here. All right, close. Awesome, woo! Just go ahead and set that aside. Now all that's left to do for this side is clean out the gunk against that gasket, get it all vacuumed up, and then just pull the gasket up. Next I'm gonna to continue to make some more space for uh, working up front, and for that I'm gonna remove the coolant reservoir tank. So, these are just some eight millimeter bolts. There's two bolts on the front, and then there's this little overflow hose, and then there's a main hose at the bottom. If you didn't drain the coolant in the last video, then uh, now's a good time to do that because you'll be getting a lot of spillage here. So, remove those bolts, take those hoses off, and then you can lift this away and set it aside. Awesome, check out all the space that we have now. It's gonna be a lot easier to start taking off all these pulleys without having to work around that reservoir tank. I'm gonna start with the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. We had already loosened these bolts in a previous video while the belt was still installed. This is the water pump. So we're just gonna back those out. These are 10 millimeter. So we're gonna back those out, set those aside, and then we're gonna take off what appears to be three idler pulleys. Kind of ridiculous, but uh, those are going to be 13 millimeter. And then also the tensioner, which it looks like there's three 10 millimeter bolts. Let's get at it. Now we're gonna attack the upper support bracket for the alternator. The alternator has two main mounting bolts at the bottom. This is literally just kind of holding up the top and it's connecting it to this coolant bypass. But this bypass is screwed into our heads, so this is what has to go. All we need to do here is remove these four bolts. These are 10 millimeter, these are eight millimeter, and then you have your uh, connection to the alternator, electrical connection, just kind of push that out of that bracket so this thing can come up. All we have left is, are just another two 10 millimeter bolts because on the other side, there was bolts from the intake manifold holding them in. In a very annoying turn of events, it appears that you cannot remove the left bolt holding this down without removing the alternator or at least loosening it. So that's what we're gonna do. We have two 13 millimeter nuts on some studs down below. Just loosen those, either loosen them enough to get that other bolt out or uh, fully take it out. All right, that wasn't too bad. If you just loosen it, it will free up that space to pull that bolt out and you don't really have to move it out of here at all. Excellent, once those are loose, just kind of gently pull them out here. And there is a coolant connection on the back. So what we're gonna wanna do is once we flip that up, we just wanna pull it out. It's just one where you push the white tabs and then pull the connection off. So we'll do that. Awesome. And then just gently pull that away. Great. 
I just set some rags down underneath the uh, rear connector so when we do have some inevitable antifreeze leaking out, it'll just catch it and then we can throw it out. At this point, I might as well just go ahead and take off the alternator since we're right here. In the rear, there's just a 10 millimeter bolt holding on the positive lead and then just a regular old connector that you just push, push down and kind of pull it out. All right, so I loosen that connector and now I'm just gonna take my 10 millimeter, pop off that lead. All right, so slide that off and there you go. Alternator is disconnected. So at this point, just take your 13 millimeter nuts off and that will lift right away. All right, so we're actually running out of stuff to take off this motor and that's making me very, very happy. So in the next video, we're absolutely going to be getting to this timing chain cover and then taking off all of the timing. Now I know a lot of you think it's a little bit crazy to go to these lengths just because I dropped a few pieces of the spark plug into the cylinder. However, I also want to use this opportunity to do some upgrades. So that's where you come in. Head to the comments below and let me know what do you think I should be doing to my three valve. If we're going down this far, doing things like headers or new cams or maybe even an underdrive pulley is really not that big of a deal. Definitely let me know and also like this video if you like it. Subscribe to stick along with this project. Keep an eye out for part four and I'll see you in the next one.